Well, we're going to be talking about what I call Muffet. I, I believe um, Julian's name for it was Muffet. Um, no, wait a minute. No, he called it Muff, Muffet. I'm calling it Muffet. Yeah. Anyhow, I thought I'd go through some of the schematical drawings. Uh, I've been looking at it, and these are more of the lower end drawings right here. And then I'm going to look at uh, Julian's um, PWM5 and his uh, MPP charge controller. Uh, I'm still going to call it my mother. Alright, here's a drawing using an Arduino as a pulse width modulated charge controller. Uh, I don't know why people like starting on the right side. Uh, Chinese, I guess. Although, I do speak some uh, Hebrew. Anyhow, you have your chart, you have your solar panel here. It comes up to here, it goes to a fuse. There's a Zener diode. It goes down to a 560K resistor. And through another 10K resistor over here. Feeds into the source. And then it's turned on by DP3 from the Arduino. Through a 2.2K resistor into a transistor, which I believe is a 2N2222A. And this in turn turns on the gate for Q3, which is an I, uh, IF, oh, excuse me, IRF 9630. That allows the voltage to go to the battery. Um, I can't say, you know, I know more than this guy or not, but there's a few things I do know, and him, him and I had discussions over uh, regu uh, well, power regulation. Uh, depends on your use case, really, but anyhow. He's got um, at least two Zener diodes in this circuit right here, at set to 10 volts. The problem is with Zener diodes is the voltage drop across it is not dependable. It changes with temperature and you can't trust it. Even though he was feeding the voltage in on X which goes into um, ADC zero on the, on the Arduino and then he turned around and fed the voltage from the battery from Y which went through ADC one. So it works, yeah, but with the design and temperature variations, you can't depend on getting a zero to five volt reading on your ADC pins. It could be 5.1 because of the temperature, you know, it just throws the whole thing out of whack. So, you know, that's not a good idea. But what I have thought about doing is keeping his LED idea for the charging, which would be red for um, bulk charging, yellow for absorption, and green for fully charged. It's just three LEDs, not that much. The only difference is, is I'm not going to use a linear uh, regulator here. I'm going to connect all of these to ground, and then through the given data pins, I'll apply a positive voltage and then shift the uh, resistor, I think, up over it. And then using a 1K ohm resistor. I think that'd be all right. If we go to uh, Julian's uh, PWM5 design, uh, I'm picking out a few components right off the bat. Um, right here is where he had his pick. At the moment, I'm going to replace it with a nano, and I'll discuss the problems with it later. Over here, he had a voltage regulator for, for this digital circuitry, and I'm going to replace this with a bulk converter. And I'm going to pull the power, not from the battery, for that circuit. Now from the battery, it's going to be pulled from the solar panel, which will be coming in over here. 
Now, Julian uses a lot of charge pumps in his design, I guess, in order to make sure that the, um, uh, well, I can't really explain it on this one. But he likes to use these to keep the transistor fully biased. I know that I've seen charge gates used a lot in order to make sure that the, um, uh, what is it, drain gate voltage is not over 20 because it's a lot of specifications for it. I think it's drain gate. Maybe it's source gate, yeah, whichever it is. To make sure it's not over 20 because if it is, it'll blow that um, component. But I am thinking about trying to utilize this part of his circuit. Not sure how much will stay, but this is the part I'm looking at. May do some minor reconstruction of it, I'm not sure. All right, let's get to what he calls Muppet, and I call him Muppet. This is his drawing for Muppet. Nothing wrong with it. Electrically, it's, it works and it's sound. But I got a few, well, my life experience type of deals coming through. Over here, this is where the solar comes through. He has a capacitor sitting here, and he made a 100 microfarad capacitor at 100 volts. And then it goes through a current sensor, a voltage divider, and all this is fed into the Arduino. And then there's LEDs, and you got your display above it. And he powered that with a 9 volt, which I'm not going to do. Uh, maybe I'll do it in the lab, I don't know. But when I do it here on the table, I might do something like that. But when I do it, a practical design to go out there, I won't be doing that. This will be replaced with a buck converter. And I'll pull the power to support this circuitry from the panel. Now, then it has it run over here to this MOSFET. Well, and also there's a capacitor here, which is a 300, uh, 3,300 microfarad capacitor, 100 volts. So we come through this MOSFET, and then he has a shocky diode sitting here. And the power goes through a choke or inductor. And then it goes through the, the current sensors, the voltage divider, and has a final capacitor to pull out any ripple before it goes out to the battery. Electrically, it's sound, it works. But I would have done a couple of changes. And I'll tell the, I'll, I'll mention the ones I would do off the bat. This 3,300 microfarad capacitor, I would probably drop it to uh, 100, if I can write, 1,000 microfarads. And then the one up here, I would make it higher. I would take it up to 330, uh, excuse me, 3,300 microfarads. Because I'm trying to buffer the, the, the current and the voltage at the front end of the apparatus. Then over here, you got a 1,000 microfarad, fine, leave it. But what I would have done, and I would have stuck it right here, is I would have used another. 3,300 uh, microfarad capacitor. Because when it comes through the gate and also comes through this choke, one of the problems that Julian had was a constant ring on that signal line. And by adding a capacitor in front of the current sensor and in front of the voltage divider, you would have smoothed all that out and kept it from jittering as much. So that's pretty much what I'll be doing. Oh, I won't be using the um, Nokia uh, 
5110 display like he did. I'm just going to use a straight four line, 20 character uh, display. And my current design is all, all of the displaying will be done by a second Arduino. Because the reason is, I want to take basically this circuit with some changes and future changes because there's some other ideas I got. You make a mirror image, right? And you got one, well, at present, I'm thinking about changing that too. You have one Arduino sitting between both of those lines and you got a mirror version. This will be phased, this will be anti phased. And all the voltages get merged down at the end on either the board going out to the batteries. And what I have been thinking about is putting a solid state relay in instead of a normal relay that will be redirected out to the dump load. Because like I said, I'm introducing a dump load into an atypical solar charge controller that's not typically there, it's not typically needed but I'm using it as a way to maximize the use of the panels. Because if it's just sitting there like a, you know, like a rock and your batteries are fully charged, then are you really getting your full money out of it? My opinion, no. I'm looking at putting in 6,000 watts. Of course, I can't use what I'm designing for that because I need to get that sooner than it would take me through the time to design it, because this could take me three to five years to do design work and testing and development. And I'm gonna need it long before that. So, I mean, I will still use this, this version I'm working on, and prototype will probably power the, um, the uh, weather station and the uh, greenhouse stuff, because I think that's gonna say it's 12 volts. Could go 24, but I'm thinking 12 as a completely separate independent system. And um, so it's not really money waste, it's just not going into the main mainstay of the household, man, mainstay of the farm. Because this is what I got here is, is a small farm. And I'm looking at saving money, using what I know, using what Sam knows, and try to make, spend less and pay off this place. Because, you know, I'm sort of gray-haired, not that you can see. But I'm probably around Julian's age, give or take. So, you guys be blessed. I'll talk to you all later. Shalom.